Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss the most basic Angular architecture called Service Smart Component, SSC for short. SSC, as the name suggests, has two main components, Service and Smart Component. If you ever built any project in Angular, you should be familiar with this concept. This architecture is good when you start working on a project or create CRUD-like interfaces, which means you fetch data from the backend, make no manipulation to it, and then make forms to send data back to the backend. An example of that could be an admin panel. Let's have a look at our layered model from my previous video. We distinguish between four layers, presentation, application, domain, and infrastructure. If we take service as an example, where should it belong? Well, services that connect data with the backend should belong in the infrastructure layer. Now, where should the smart component belong? It is showing the HTML template and connects the data sources, so it is in the presentation layer. How about the application layer? In this simple architecture, you most likely are not going to need it, so smart components can take part of it, but in general, if you think you need authentication, state, command bus, or anything else application layer related, it is assigned to upgrade your architecture to more advanced one. I will show you how to upgrade your architecture in next videos. What to do with the domain layer? Well, this is where we will create domain interfaces that can later be turned into rich domain classes. We could also skip this layer, but experience shows that it is much easier to define it from the start then later add it in a layer in between. This video will be very hands-on, so bear with me till the end. Today I'm going to be building a library using service smart component architecture. It will fetch product data from the backend and show it on a list. Even though the task is simple, let's look at the way it can be done using SSC architecture. First, let's create library for it and call it SSC in architectures folder. It will create its own module. Now, let's add folder for each layer. We create domain, infrastructure, and UI. Domain is a centric part of every project. You see, domain tends to be unknown and simple at the beginning, and it slowly evolves over time. So, we always want to create a domain folder, even though there's gonna be just two files in it. It is much easier to put things at the right place from the start. Ok, let's get to the code. Let's create product.ts file. It's gonna contain our domain model for the product. Now let's create a product interface with the following properties. ID, name, image URL and price. If you look at my previous videos, I advocate for creating classes over interfaces. This is still true, however, we are just starting off a project here and we do not want to have any business logic yet. The only thing we need for now is to define a data structure of our product. This is why you should always start with an interface and then let it evolve to a class when you need it. I will make more videos about enriching your domain model in the future, so stay tuned for the next videos. Now we need a doer class that will fetch the product model to our smart component. Let's create getsproducts.ts file in our domain folder. Now let's define that interface. So we're gonna call it gets products and it's gonna have a single method called get all. It's gonna return observable of array of products. This naming convention can be a little bit funny to you, but it makes a lot of sense to me and it's my own preference. I believe an interface should describe what it's doing. So it gets products, it creates products. I always use the third form in order to explain that. In order to use that interface, we need to create an injection token. This is how Angular dependency injection system works. So let's create a const called gets products all in capitals and then create that injection token of type gets products and give some unique name to it. This is it for the domain part for now. Sure, it's simple and small, but it lays the foundation for further improvement. We need to be able to persist this domain model somewhere. And this is exactly the responsibility of the infrastructure layer. In this type of architecture, 99% of the situation is persisting it over HTTP requests to your backend API. 
Now let's generate a service from Angular schematics called HTTP product. Even though it is a standard Angular naming convention, I like to prefix my services with the protocol at the beginning, like HTTP in this example. As mentioned earlier in this video, infrastructure implements domain interface. So let's make sure that we implement gets products interface from the domain folder and generate all needed methods. Now we need to make sure to inject HTTP client in the constructor. And now we need to implement get all method using that HTTP client. In order to fetch the data, we need to use a get method on it. And then we need to provide the URI of the endpoint. For the sake of this presentation, I'm going to use a static JSON file, but normally we would be using a REST API for it. Now we need to type the response and map it to the domain model. Let's have a look at JSON response first. This one is using JSON API format and you can check it on jsonapi.org website. It is important to understand that formatting can change and they should not affect the domain model. Therefore, all the details about the formatting of your request and response must stay inside infrastructure layer. In JSON API format, there are some commonalities between responses. The most important parts are ID, type and attributes. Let's create response.ts file that will contain common type for every JSON API response in our application. Next, we create a generic interface called has data collection that will represent a collection of items. The first property, as in most JSON formats, is data. Data will contain an array of objects, and each object will have three properties, ID, type, and attributes. You can see that attributes has type N, and N is not a good type, you should avoid it at all costs. The problem is, we don't know what is the type of attribute, because it will depend on what kind of request and response we are making. So what we can do is to leverage generic types here and make attributes of type T and then add generic type T to has data collection interface. Let's create product.attributes.ts file that will contain specific response attributes. Now we need to create an interface called product attributes. As you already saw in the JSON response, it will contain the following properties, name, image URL and price. For now, we will keep all these fields as strings to keep it super simple. But in later videos, you will see how to optimize infrastructure models. We will talk about how to properly handle data types like prices and dates and many more. Now, let's glue it all together in our HTTP product service. Let's define a return type of client get method and use has data collection generic interface that will contain product attributes interface inside. You can see that the return type is not correct, so let's use a pipe and map pipeable operator to turn the response data into the format of the main model interface. Now we just need to assign ID from generic interface and the rest from the specific attributes interface, and we're good. We need to set up our libraries providers. In order to do that, we need to open our Angular SSC module file and create provider section in the module decorator. Then provide gets products injection token and use class provider to provide HTTP product service. Now we need to fetch this data somewhere and present it in the reactive template. This is why we need to create smart component called product list in the UI folder. Now we need to fetch the data into observable. Remember, smart components always work with observables in Angular. In order to do that, we need to use inject decorator with gets products injection token. Finally, we create a private variable called gets products of type gets products interface. This will allow us to use Angular's dependency injection system. Now we just need to create a public variable called products with a dollar sign at the end of it. And then assign get all method from get product service to this variable. The dollar sign is called finish notation. It represents observables in Angular. Let's open product list component.html file and create a template for it. First, let's add a header to it. It can be h2 for example. 
Make sure you don't use H1 because it can appear only once in the entire page. And this component is something we can reuse. Then we create a section for the list. Remember, there are plenty of section elements in HTML5. Do not overuse divs. Now we are going to use Angular Material Card and use Angular's ng4 structure directive to create as many cards as there are products. We need to have a header with a product name. Now let's add image with a source and alt attributes. Then let's put price in the content part of the card. And this is it for service smart component architecture. It looks simple, but it's not easy, but it's very powerful. So I really encourage you to master it first before you move on to more advanced architecture and enrich a domain model. That's gonna come in next video in the future. So please subscribe and let me know what you think. Thank you and I hope you learned something.